Um, and uh, so I'm going to tell you about some uh, about some experimental co uh, collaboration that we had last year with uh, with uh, Benjamin, with, together with Benjamin Doyon, who is uh, in the audience. So both of us are theorists, uh, and we've collaborated with uh, Isabelle Bouchoul, who is a, an experiment called atom experimentalist in uh, Palaiso near Paris, and her PhD student uh, Max Schemer. And this is, so this is about uh, PhD. Um, Okay, so basically, what we have in mind is uh, is this. Okay, when we talk about GHD, we what we have in mind is this. So imagine we take a hardcore uh, sphere, hard spheres or a two-dimensional billiard, and we suddenly kick uh, one of the balls. Kick one of the balls. Okay. Well. Okay. So it doesn't work. Sorry about that. So this is supposed to, okay, so I'm supposed to kick uh, one of the balls and then uh, you see that it, uh, it sets all the other balls in motion. And, um, and so, okay, so very quickly uh, the energy is, is shared among all the, all the spheres, so I guess everybody here knows that. And if you do the same thing in, in one dimension, uh, this, this doesn't happen, because if you kick uh, one of the balls here and they're all identical, uh, then when it uh, when it kicks this one, uh, it's just uh, this one starts moving and this one stops and so on and so. On. Okay, so uh, really a pity that you don't. Ah, okay, that's it. Okay, so here you see, and uh, when you do it in one D, it does this. All right, uh, and of course we've all known this for a very long time because this is what's illustrated by uh, by this uh, by this. This uh, desktop, desktop toy and Newton's cradle, and uh, okay, so the, here the, it's also supposed to be a, a video that I, I saw on YouTube. Ah. But okay, so everybody knows this. You don't even need to be a physicist to know that. Uh, so the point is, uh, in that case, uh, if we want to, rep to uh, represent the state in the box after some short uh, relaxation time. Then uh, the only thing we need to do to to keep track of are three uh, three quantities: so the density, the density of the of the balls, the average velocity, and the um, the energy density. Okay, that's that's it. That's all we need to know. While in that case, we really need to keep track of the full distribution of velocities. Now. If we use this as an input uh, in a large, in a large uh, scale, coarse grain description, uh, so Im we imagine we have a macroscopic system, we chop it into mesoscopic uh, fluid cells, such that each fluid cell contains a large number of uh, particles. Then uh, each, the state within each cell will be represented by these three quantities, and then we can just, uh, uh, at large scale, is, uh, this becomes uh, some continuous densities, and we can write continuity equations for them, and uh, this, this gives us uh, a hydrodynamic description. Now, how do we do this in that case? That's, that was the question about uh, GHD. And uh, so basically, um, okay, so now, I think now uh, it's, it's clear to everyone how to do, uh, to do this, but a couple of years ago, uh, at least, okay, in, this, in the quantum case, at least a couple of years ago, it was not so clear, and so there were, uh, there are two, two things that you could think of doing. So the first thing is to say, well, let's, let's just forget that this does not, uh, lo the, 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 the fluid cells do not thermalize. So let's, let's just uh, completely forget this phenomenon that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, yeah, that it does not thermalize. And let's uh, pretend we are locally at thermal equilibrium and just write standard hydrodynamic equations. Okay, so you might think there is no just, I mean, there's no justification for this, and you might think it's completely stupid, but it's actually something that uh, people have done quite a lot in the literature uh, to describe the one-dimensional Bose gas I'm going to talk about. And uh, so the, and the, 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 the new uh, thing to do is to say, well, okay, let's really keep, keep track of, of the whole, the whole density, uh, of the whole distribution of velocities and, and write some equation for that. So, so in the in the rest of the talk, I'm going to refer, I'm going to compare the two, and I'm going to uh, refer to this as uh, 
is just hydrodynamics or conventional hydro, and this is uh, this will be GHD. Okay. So, and the, the message, the main message is that uh, GHD works when we want to describe a one-dimensional Bose gas, uh, while this conventional hydro doesn't. And um, and uh, and we so we've checked this experimentally by comparing the two theories to experimental data. Uh, so in a, in a gas of rubidium atoms uh, confined to one dimension uh, that is well described by uh, the Lieblinger model, which is uh, an integrable. Okay, and so the, basically, the, the, so I'm going to show you uh, several setups, but, uh, um, but the, 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 key, the key one is this one. Uh, so you start from a double well potential. So you start from a, the, your gas of atoms, uh, one-dimensional gas of atoms uh, at equilibrium in this double well potential, and then you suddenly re release the potential. So initially, the, this is the, I'm showing you here the density profile, a function of position. The, in, uh, uh, so th that's the, really the in situ profile. So it's really the, the atomic density at, at, time, at, at a given time. So initially, it has two peaks corresponding to the two, two minima of the double well potential, and then you let it expand. And I'm comparing here uh, the experimental data, which is the, the noisy line, to uh, two theories. The one is GHD, that's the plane curve yeah, that you see uh, is in good agreement with the data, and the other one is just obtained by running the, the simulation with a standard uh, conventional hydrodynamics, as I said, uh, which relies on the, uh, on the wrong assumption of local thermalization, and this one does not work. So that's basically the message. And then uh, for the rest of the talk, I'm just going to elaborate a bit on a, on a few points. I'm going to show you the, the experiment, the, the experimental setup, then I'm going to uh, a bit about GHD. So there's going to be some overlap here with the with the lectures by Herbert. Uh, but Herbert so far talked about classical systems. So I will just try to tell you uh, what the difference is when, when the, what the difference is when you go to quantum integrable systems, and then I'll discuss a bit more the results. Okay. Questions so far? All right. So. So the experiment looks like this. It's, an, it's a chip, an, ex, an electronic chip, like the ones you have in your cell phones or, 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 or laptops. Uh, so there are wires uh, that on the chip uh, that with a current that runs through them, and the, the current uh, produces some uh, magnetic field that surrounds, that surrounds the, the chip. Now, by uh, cleverly disposing the, the wires and choosing the currents that you run through them, you can engineer some interesting uh, profile for the magnetic field. And um, the, the rubidium atoms have a property that have the property that they will be uh, they will spontaneously try to go towards the minima of the of the of the amplitude of the magnetic field. So you can engineer uh, a, a, a magnetic field profile so that they, uh, the minimum is along a, a line here. And so they get really trapped uh, along a, a one-dimensional uh, along a one-dimensional uh, subspace of things. Uh, okay, and um, so this is um, confinement in the 1D direction. And on top of that, there are other wires, four wires that create a, a, weak, uh, a weak potential along this, uh, this one-dimensional direction that you can see here. Since there are four wires, you, uh, you can think of the four currents in the wire as being four uh, free parameters. And you can think of those as being the four first terms in a, in a Taylor expansion of your potential. And that's important because this allows, uh, this allows the experimentalist to create both uh, uh, harmonic and double well potential. It's going to be. Yeah. And then uh, they just, uh, to, to image, to, get, to, uh, to, image the, to, to take pictures, they just uh, use a CCD camera, uh, which destroys. So every time you measure, you destroy the sample, and then you have to do the experiment again, and then average. Um, but this is typically what the pictures look. There's a single cloud, and the reason why you see two, two clouds here is simply because there's a mirror somewhere. There's a mirror in the experiment so that you see the cloud and its uh, image. But there's a single cloud. 
And that's also important. Uh, in terms of uh, typical parameters, so the temperature is around uh, 50 to around the, uh, on the scale of 100 nanokelvin, say. Uh, the correspond the transverse frequency is on the scale of 300 nanokelvin, so it's higher. So that uh, uh, the large majority of the atoms are in the low, lie in the in the ground states of the of the of the transverse uh, confining potential. So it's really well in the 1D regime. And this is well described by a one-dimensional model. And then on top of that, so just a boson moving along a 1D line. And on top of that, the uh, repulsion between the rubidium atoms is, uh, uh, is very uh, short range. So you can approximate it by a delta function. And uh, so this is well approximated by the, by the Lieblinger model. So of course, uh, this is not. Of course, it's not an, an exact realization of the Lieblinger model, but it's sufficiently close so that the Lieblinger uh, model will describe the short, uh, the short time dynamics of the system. So the, the dynamics that you, that you can probe on experimental time scales uh, is, is well will be well described by this. Okay, now about GHD. So, uh, so the, those two papers came out. In, 2000, uh, in spring 2016, within a week on the archive, and it really started, uh, uh, many, many people were inspired by those two papers and, 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 and started working on this, and, and many important developments uh, followed. But the, the two papers that start, started it uh, were those, and uh, so a number of people are in the audience, Benjamin, uh, Bruno, uh, Jacopo, Maurizio, and so on. And there will be many talks about that. Okay. So, uh, long story short, uh, GHD is two equation is a set of two equations, are, as Herb, which uh, Herbert already presented. One is a Liouville-like uh, equation for the for the dense for phase space density of uh, of particles, if you want particles position x and and uh, velocity v. At least that's true for the hard for the hardwood gas. For other models, this object has a slightly more complicated meaning. Uh, I'm going to tell you about that. And uh, then there's this uh, equa integral equation which fixes the effective velocity that enters the, this Liouville like equation here. Uh, so now, in the quantum case, this was uh, so for quantum integrals, uh, quantum integrable systems, that was really new. But of course, uh, I think Herbert pointed that out to Benjamin in a, in a conference in, in Pont a Mousson, which, uh, uh, which I was a co organizer of. Uh, immediately after those two papers came out, that uh, this had been known for a very long time in classical systems, in the, in the hardware gas, anyway. You can, and then you can even find it in, in the textbook. <coughs> well, right. For the, I, I will tell you what it is. Yeah, for the hardware, for the hardware gas, this would just be the diameter of the of the of the rods. Uh, okay, so this effective this integral equation for the effective velocity has this uh, nice, has this uh, meaning. So you can draw this nice picture, uh, which Herbert already drew. So I'm going to go quickly on this. So uh, if you have a particle that goes at velocity one uh, velocity v, so it has a slope one over v in this space time picture. Uh, and it goes through a medium uh, with other part uh, with with other background particles that move at uh, velocity one over w. Each time the one that has velocity v hits another one, they exchange their velocities. And so, if you follow the one that is that has velocity v, you see that it jumps by an amount delta. So every time it hits another one, it jumps by delta, and therefore, effectively, it's moving faster. This this slope is a bit smaller, so effectively, it's moving faster. So there's a, a sort of a renormalization of the of the velocity due to the due to the background, and uh, then you can do that for a single uh, velocity of particles in the background, and then you integrate uh, with density rho of w, and you will find that this uh, will find this integral equation. Okay, so the ba so the, this is so far the picture was entirely classical, and then uh, the way you adapt this to uh, quantum integrable models is essentially the follow relies essentially on the two following uh, two following uh, observations. So when you talk about the quantum integrable model, 
if you want to again adopt a hydrodynamic, uh, hydrodynamic picture where you will chop the system into small <laughs> mesoscopic fluid cells so what you want to do is to represent the macro state within each fluid cell by uh, some some typical eigenstate of the lieb linegar model uh, and so this idea can be traced back to young and young and of course it's at the heart of many many recent works nowadays i think uh, it goes under the name of generalized eth but Okay, so many, many recent works along these lines. So, uh, so you do that, and then the, the eigenstates themselves are obtained by the beta ansatz, and uh, they have a well-defined thermodynamic limit uh, in which they are labeled by a distribution of rapidities. And that's the object that is now going to enter the GHD equation. Uh, the second ingredient is that this delta, which was entering the second GHD equation, the one for the effective velocity, it, it used to be the diameter of the rods in the hardwood gas. Now it repla gets replaced by the phase shift of the, of the Wigner time delay that uh, comes from the two-body scattering phase. So let me, let me uh, explain quickly what this is. So imagine you have two particles uh, on an infinite line uh, with uh, delta interaction, contact interaction, then you can write the eigenstates on the infinite line. They, they, on the infinite line, they take this form. Uh, it's a product of two plane waves uh, with two terms, where the P1 and P2 have been exchanged, and the relative phase of the two terms uh, is a phase. Oh, sorry, the, the, red, the relative phase between the two terms uh, takes this form, a function of uh, of the relative momentum and of the uh, repulsion. Now, uh, physically, you can. Uh, it, it has the following, this phase has the following co consequence. So if you take two packets, two uh, packets uh, at semi-classical velocities V1, V2, you send them, you make them collide. Uh, so the, the, they, they go away from each other, keep their semi-classical velocity uh, V1, V2. However, uh, they have been, because of the scattering, they have been shifted a little bit compared to the, so compared to the position where you would have expected them to be if there had been no scattering, they have been shifted a little bit by an amount delta. And this delta, uh, you can calculate and it's just the, it's h bar times the different so the, times the derivative of the phase with respect to the relative momentum. So for the lieb linegar model, this gives uh, some. Uh, let's let's take the form of a Lorentzian, and this is an object that is well known as the kernel uh, in thermodynamic. Okay, now the miracle of the beta ansatz is that th this structure uh, remains for uh, as many particles as you want. So the wave function is still uh, sum over um, permutations of products of plane waves uh, with a relative phase that is now a many body phase, but the many body phase breaks down into products of, uh, uh, breaks down into a product of two body phases. Uh, so it's still the, the two body phase that uh, that uh, scattering phase that takes uh, that plays the, the fundamental role, and uh, then these eigenstates uh, you can uh, in the thermodynamic limit you can uh, label by uh, densities uh, of uh, of these p the densities of these p's here these quasi momenta or or let me call the p j over over mass uh, rapidity rho v now is density of rapidities and um, so this density of rapidity now you make position dependent and time dependent in a fluid-like picture, and uh, this this is now the, the the object that enters the GHD equation, and this delta that enters the second GHD equation that's the that's the the phase shift due to the to the scattering phase. Okay. So this is how you adapt how you adapt. Uh, the, hardware, the, the, the equations of the hardware gas uh, to, the, to, to the quantum integrable systems. Let me just emphasize that uh, I think the people who wrote those two, two great papers in 2016, they knew nothing about the hardware gas, so they rediscovered everything uh, in the quantum context. Okay. Um, and so now uh, I will just uh, give you a few more details about the experimental results. So, uh, okay. So, so, so we want to describe the evolution of the of the of, of the atomic cloud. 
And for that, we need, uh, we need before we even talk about doing GHD or, or something else, we need to understand what the, what the initial state is of the gas. So, um, so you know, there's some cooling process and so on, and uh, at some point you say, okay, now this is time zero, and now I will start, I'll start my experiment. And uh, you want to know uh, what, the, uh, what the initial state of your cloud uh, is. And so uh, to do this, um, we use uh, a, a method that, is, uh, that, has be, that has been known for some time, I will show you, in, in cold atoms. So we use the, uh, what they call Yong-Yong equation of state, which is really thermodynamic beta ansatz. Uh, which gives you uh, the equation of state of the, of the gas. So it gives you the pressure as a function of uh, temperature and, uh, and uh, uh, particle density. And then uh, local density approximation. So again, fluid-like picture. We assume that in each, uh, in each fluid cell, the gas is initially at thermal equilibrium. We use the equation of state of the gas known from thermodynamic beta ansatz. And this provides you a method to uh, fit the initial density profile. So the initial density profile, you know the number of particles because that's measured. So you know the number of particles. You, we know also the potential because the potential is a har simple harmonic potential and we know the frequency. Uh, so there's a single free parameter and that's the temperature. So we fit the temperature and then we find this kind of curve which you see agrees very well with the experimental data. Now, uh, just because in, in cold atoms, people, of course, have developed many other theories, effective theories uh, that are valid in some, valid in some regimes, so Rospitaevsky, uh, ideal, ideal Bose gas, and so on. All of these, uh, all of these uh, effective theories are supposed to be valid in, for some uh, values of so, some regions of the, uh, in parameter space, the two parameters being uh, 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 dimensionless uh, repulsion strength and uh, dimensionless temperature. And uh, what this picture here shows you is just that uh, none of these effective theories uh, is able to reproduce even the, the initial state. So uh, we, are not going, we are not even going to talk about di the, the dynamics for those theories because they, they don't even work for the, for the initial state. That's, that's the message here. So really, just to describe the state of the gas at time zero, you already need uh, thermodynamic beta ansatz. Uh, so now, this is not new. This is not new at all. The paper that, uh, as far as I know, first did this was this one, Young Young Thermodynamics on an Atom Chip in the group of Van Druten in Amsterdam. And uh, so they, they did it precisely what I, I, I just said. So they, uh, they uh, just prepared the gas at, at equilibrium in, in harmonic traps and measured the density, the in situ density profiles, and compared to uh, the th to PBA, and uh, fi found good agreement. And this has been used uh, forever since by many groups. Uh, for instance, here you see results uh, that are uh, yeah, this is weakly repulsive regime. This is a strong, stronger repulsion. So it's really valid in the full the full par uh, parameter space of the Lieblinger model. Uh, so I think this was really nice uh, and important paper. It was really, as far as I know, the first that showed that, uh, you know, beta ansatz is actually something useful to describe experiment. If, you're, if you like integrability, this is a paper that I think is important for the history of the, of the topic. All right, and so once now we have a good description, a good description of the initial state, and we want to describe the evolution. So experimentally, so uh, Isabelle and Max uh, just they prepare their their gas in a in a harmonic trap, and then they release the just completely switch off the 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 potential. That's still confined in one D, but it just expands freely in one D along the uh, along the one D tube. Uh, okay, so then they, they just take pictures of the, of the cloud at, at, at increasing times, and they find, uh, uh, yeah, they find this density profile. And when we compare to the GHD evolution, as you can see, it, it works well, uh, and that's, uh, so that's very satisfying. 
there's a problem though, which is that if you, if you we, so we did also, the, we solved the Euler equation for standard hydro with the, dense, with the equation of state uh, from uh, thermodynamic beta ansatz. And uh, it turns out uh, they're, they're so close that you can't uh, really distinguish between them. So as you can see here, there are two theory curves on this. Uh, so there's, uh, again, the, the experimental data is the noisy line, and, the, and the, there are two theory curves. And you see that they fall on top of each other, actually. So they're not exactly the same, but the uh, difference is so small that you don't see it. Uh, and that's, OK, so the, that's a bit frustrating. But after all, maybe this is not so surprising. It's just that you start from a state at local equilibrium, and then you evolve it in a way nothing really fancy happens. Uh, if you start from a harmonic potential, it's just going to, the, the cloud is just, uh, it's just spreading, and it may be that at any time it's just close to local equilibrium, and and then you don't see a difference. Okay, so that's um, so that's why we went to a double well potential, which they can also do in the experiment, as I as I told you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what breaking of integral? Uh, uh, you mean the initial? Yes, yes, sure. But it's a it's a hydrodynamic picture. So what matters is that it's integrable within every small every small fluid cell. The the the, the, the trap the, the trap varies sufficiently. I mean, there are five thousand particles here. The trap vary. The the, the 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 trap is varying sufficiently slowly so that. Uh, and, yeah, yeah. No, when they go to the edge, they just escape the, the system, right? And, and this, by the way, yeah, so that's why they stop, right? They, they can't go to very long times because, because the, the atoms just go out. Yes, yes, at the same temperature, uniform temperature. Yes, that's an assumption, but uh, it's, that's an assumption, and this temperature is the only free parameter that we have, and, and this is uh, what you get, so it's reasonable. I don't know, I mean, uh, yeah, th then it will get even better because you will increase the number of, of fitting parameters. But, uh... Ah! Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you, if you take inhomogeneous temperature initial time, and I don't know. Possibly you would see a difference, but uh, we don't know if this is what is in the experiment or not, right? They, they can't measure temperature uh, every point. So. so yeah, the fact that it's uniform temperature at initial time, that's, a, that's an assumption that we make. All right, um, so yeah, so that's why they went to then to double well potential because, uh, and the reason is the following. So here I'm showing you uh, phase space occupations. So this is position, the horizontal direction is position, vertical direction is the rapidity. And this is the uh, initial, so this is the initial uh, phase space dist distribution of quasi-particle in phase space, if you want. So, so the, the density of rapidities as a, uh, and uh, density of rapidities for each uh, position. Uh, and this is what is obtained by, uh, by uh, doing just uh, local density approximation plus, uh, plus uh, thermodynamic beta and that's at time zero. Uh, of course, uh, yeah, so th this, this is the same picture, just the same picture. But then from this state at time zero, we can do uh, either GHD time evolution or uh, evolve with the Euler equation for standard uh, conventional hydrodynamics. And uh, here you see a difference. And the, and the reason is simply that uh, because you start from a double well potential, some particles start moving to the right from the left peak, and some particles from the right peak start moving to the left. And so at some point in the middle, you have 
fastly moving particles uh, going to the right, fastly moving particles going to the left. And so if you assume that you're a th thermal equilibrium, then you have to distort your distribution. While if it's really GHD evolution, which uh, allows for this kind of out of equilibrium states, this doesn't happen. And so you, here you expect to see a clear difference. And then when you, once you integrate at each, for each fixed position, you integrate over all rapidities to find the, to find the atomic density at, at a point, then you indeed, after some time, you see that it's uh, significantly uh, different. Like, uh, so standard hydro, conventional hydro predicts uh, the formation of two uh, large density waves, uh, while this doesn't happen in uh, GHD. Okay, so then they did, the, so Isabel and Max uh, took data, and, uh, and for an expansion from a double well, and uh, as you see, GHD works well. Direct comparison with GHD works well. Again, this is, there's only one fit parameter here. It's the initial temperature. And uh, while if you compare to uh, convention, conventional hydrodynamics for the same initial state, same initial temperature, um, this, this, this does not work. Okay. So then they also did... Um, they also did a quench from a double well to harmonic potential, which is supposed to mimic the quantum Newton, which mimics the quantum Newton straddle, uh, the, like the, this, so this famous experiment of uh, David Wide's group, uh, where they uh, had uh, atoms colliding and bouncing against each other in a harmonic trap. So this does essentially the same thing. The only difference is, uh, is that this is now in the weekly the atoms are weakly repulsive, so it's a, we are probing, probing a different regime from what they had in the Lieblinger uh, parameter space. Uh, and the, the other difference is that they had another way of preparing the initial state. They were doing it with a Bragg pulse, while well, here it's really just preparing a, at equilibrium in a double well potential. But, but, but the principle is the same. And uh, direct comparison with GHD here uh, is qualitatively okay, at least, but it's it's not great, it's much worse than what we had before. Uh, and uh, so we think that, okay, first of all, you see that the time scales that are probed here are larger. So that goes up to 0.2 seconds, while earlier it was just uh, 50 milliseconds. And uh, then some effects, other effects that uh, break, uh, break in, and, uh, and, and this might explain some of the discrepancy. Also, it's just that the exper experimentally, it's harder to switch, uh, to, to go immediately, to go instantaneously from double well to harmonic. So this, the quench is a little bit less clean than, than this. Um, but the main effect that seems to be here at long, longer times is just that at atoms get lost. So they just escape the trap, and, uh, and, and this is the, something that is not modeled by, by GHD. And so this might be a an explanation for why uh, the agreement is, is less good than previous. Okay, so I'm finished. Um, okay, so I presented you some experimental results that validate GHD as a, as a large-scale uh, effective approach for the one-dimensional Bose gas, uh, which is close to being uh, close to integrable because it's close to close to uh, the vinegar model uh, while uh, conventional hydro which is a method that 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 is used by a number of people that uh, that actually doesn't work at least in some situations as I showed you for if you just stick to harmonic traps it's actually not so bad um, okay so an ex an open question regarding connections with experiments uh, seems to be really this problem that there are losses uh, so if someone has some idea on how to model losses, I think this could, so this could probably be very interesting. And then, uh, uh, okay, so we are theorists, so, uh, so um, this conference is mostly about theory, so uh, there were many, many recent developments uh, on, inspired by GHD. There will be many talks about this with many people in the audience who contributed to that. And, this is very exciting. 
And uh, one question I was interested in personally was, uh, can we, because in the end, GHD is an effective classical description of, of some quantum model. So what, where, where, where do the quantum effects go? Uh, I think this is a question that uh, one should uh, think about. And, uh, and so we, we, we are interested at the moment at, at quantum fluctuations around, uh, around the GHD solutions. And, uh, uh, okay. This would be another book, but okay, thank you.